wow, Superwoman, <laughs> that's extraordinary. It really is. For somebody who struggles to do a lane <laughs> in the safety of a swimming pool, um, my admiration knows no bounds. It oh, was remarkable, you. especially as you have ME, yes. which is a really, really misdiagnosed and misunderstood illness. And, yep. and actually took so long for you to get diagnosed. Yes, yes. So I started to get ill when I was 10. Right. Um, and they think it might have been something like glandular fever. Um, but my whole adolescence was kind of wiped out. You know, I was, when I was well, I was captain of every sports team and a real sort of overachiever because yeah. I would wake up the next day and not be able to lift my hand to brush my own hair. Right. And, you know, this, uh, my, I lost faith of, with my body. Mm. Um, I went through periods of such bad mental health so as um, bulimic with anorexic episodes, sure. uh, self-harm, because I couldn't trust my body. I hated mm. being... I felt trapped in my body. So when I woke up at 17 and I couldn't walk, I thought, well, give it a couple of weeks and I'll, you know, be mm. normal again. And I didn't. Um, and so, yes, I ended up having to be uh, using a wheelchair. And mm. that was when I was diagnosed retrospectively. Sure. They said, well, this is what you must have been suffering with is, is ME. It was nice to have a name. Yeah. So that it wasn't all in my head. Sure. But there's nothing the medical world can do to cure you. There's mm. no... So you just live with it. You just live yes. with it, really. And you yes. know... How I mean, talk about pushing yourself. <laughs> you, know, you know how to push yourself, that's for sure. So yeah. tell me where this idea came from to do this remarkable challenge that really such hardly anybody can do. Victoria Wood has a part to play in it because I was a very sheltered child. We yes. didn't have a TV <laughs> until I was about four or five. And so when I saw uh, that sketch... Oh, that brilliant I sketch. I thought it was a documentary. <laughs> So, you know, you're there. I think somebody could tie a bag of sandwiches and head to France. And, you know, so I always <laughs> wanted to do it. And in, when I was in the wheelchair, um, a therapist I went to see, because obviously um, the medical world said, well, you just have to rest. Yes. So my mum took me to an alternative therapist just to try and get some symptomatic relief. Mm. Um, and he, he said sort of something that changed my life. He said, everything you've ever done and the way you've done it, the way you live your life, the way you treat your body, the way you let others treat you and the way you think about yourself has led you to where you are now. Uh, You're the only one who can walk away. Right. And at 17, it sounded like he was saying it was my fault. Mm. But he said, go away and write a bucket list. Go and write a wish list of anything you would like to do to give yourself reasons to get better. Right. And swimming the English Channel was kind of the first thing that went on the list. Now, I right. was told in my mid-20s I couldn't have kids. Right. So when I got pregnant, it was kind of a bit of a miracle babe, and I quickly realised I was probably going to be a single mum. Yeah. And having being a self-employed single mum with an incredibly poor track record of health, mm. I was terrified that I was going to live ill. Right. So you. I wanted to do something so much harder than my daily life to, to put it in balance. Mm. And, you know, looking back at my bucket list, the, swimming to France was the only thing left on it. So I only trained when Dylan was asleep right. and set out to do it. And, and, and swimming to France gave me such a sense of empowerment and this feeling of, of choice, mm. that my voice, I could, I could find a way to do these things. And I loved it so much that I wanted to do another and then another. <laughs> and, and I came to realise that, that I could do this thing where I could keep going far beyond reason. Yeah. And um, there's this thing called Ocean 7, which is this list of channels around yeah, the world. Yeah, we can see this. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I know. That, that take us from apart. They're all different um, challenges. So Northern Ireland to Scotland, the water doesn't get much beyond 14 degrees, so it's incredibly cold. Yeah. Whereas um, the one in the Molokai Channel is incredibly warm. It's 20. 21 to 24 degrees right. and there's lots of sharks and the Pacific Ocean is big and so there's all different kinds of challenges. Now I didn't, I wasn't interested in ticking them off on a list in right. my lifetime and because of ME, my life of recovery, I wanted to see if it was possible to do them in a year right. to rise again and again and again. Um, and through the time period I realised that my son had learning difficulties and mm. he's, he was diagnosed with autism. Right. So he was never going to have a normal life. Mm. Uh, he couldn't cope with... or well, normal life. He was going to Whatever approach that life is. differently. I know. <laughs> Whatever that is. So he couldn't cope with school, so right. I've elected to homeschool him. Right. Um, and we set this out as an adventure for me to show him different ways of living. Right. And we set off and we started. And, um, yes, at some point I became aware that actually I was answering my own questions that I'd had since I was a kid. Mm. And I elected to change the challenge mm. partway through because I realised my voice was as important as not just anybody else's, but everybody else's. And I finally became empowered to listen to myself, to say, do you know what? The, the strength that it takes to swim a channel or mm. to complete a challenge, the marathon, for example, sure. never, ever, ever giving up. You know, you probably had that yeah. in your head when you hit the wall. Yeah. There's a kind of strength that is undersold, which is the strength of when to stop. 
of when to say I no. I know what you mean. I do. In fact, it would have been easier for you to carry on. Yeah, the swimming was actually the easiest part yeah, of it, believe the it or hard not. thing was to say, do you know what, my boy needs me and he's yeah. not particularly happy with this. I'm actually going to stop and, yeah. uh, for him. And you can still do it again. Absolutely. You know, you can still, you've got one more, I think, one more to do. One more to do, but I've no interest in ticking them off a list. The challenge you've was to it. see if I could do it in a year, to yeah. see if I could keep myself healthy yeah, and yeah, I know yeah. that I can. So wow. I've answered my challenge. I don't need to. It's fascinating. And so many things that we've not had a chance to talk yeah. about. So what you have to do is go and see Against the Tides. It's in movies from the 10th of May, 10th I believe. May, yes. It's an extraordinary story. Absolutely amazing. Your boy must be really proud of you. Amazing woman. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you so Thank much. you so much for coming in. I'm extraordinary. <laughs> I love meeting people that do amazing things.